Hallelujah. Glory to God. 23. Yes, verse 23. Go ahead and read that out loud for me real quickly. Hallelujah. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the spring of life. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody else have a, a different uh, a version of that? Real quickly, real quickly. We don't have our Bibles open. Come on, y'all. Let's move. Let's move. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Come on, read out loud for me. Minister G, let's go. Verse 23. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above all that you guard, for out of it flows the springs of life. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody else? One more version. What you say, Brother T? Read out loud. Keep thy heart with all dig, uh, di uh, dil uh, diligence, <laughs> my Lord. For out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So y'all, just real quickly, we're just going to get back on uh, the subject of uh, intimacy and understanding intimacy. Um, I'm always reminded when I'm having conversations with those who have been under the teaching. And sometimes when you're asking the questions, they can't regurgitate what you're saying. So sometimes you got to go back and repeat it. Amen. So we can get it into our spirit. Amen. I was asking a couple of people I was talking to, what was the one thing I kept on saying over and over again when we were teaching on intimacy and they weren't able to tell me. So, and I said, I said, Watch who you be intimate with. No, 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 it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now, and you reveal, and you reveal who I was talking to. <laughs> so, so you told on yourself, so I didn't do it. Um, but yes, be careful who you are intimate with. And we talked about how important it is. And we today, we're going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about uh, being careful um, within that intimacy. There are different people in our lives that God actually puts into your life. Can anybody think of one person that you know God has put in your life as relationship? And it doesn't have to be romantic or anything like that. I'm talking about someone who you can be accountable to. Anybody can y'all think of at least one person in your life that you know that you can be godly accountable to? That's, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Nobody raising their hand. Y'all don't have anybody else oh. that you're accountable to? Woo! Yes. That's dangerous. I ain't see my mama raise his hand. I ain't see Paul raise his hand. Y'all have anybody you accountable to? Yeah. If you don't, if you don't, I'm advising you to do that. Amen? Because we are not designed to walk this walk by ourselves. You need somebody who's going to spiritually check you. Oh, yeah. Amen? You need somebody who's going to spiritually put you back in line. You need somebody who's going to spiritually give you godly wisdom. Amen? We need that. Y'all say need. I need this. If you're going to walk, if you're going to walk this walk the right way, it is not possible to do it all by yourself. Amen? You need somebody who's going to say, you were wrong. You should not have done that. Why? Because look what the word of God said. God is telling us not to do that. You need somebody who are who you are accountable to. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that, y'all. Trusting in our God connections. And this is an extension of intimacy. We talked about intimacy, right? Remember, y'all, did y'all write down those notes on our refresher a couple weeks ago? Maybe two weeks ago? Amen? Yeah. On intimacy and what that means and how important it is to not allow just know anybody to be in your holy of holies. Not even in your inner court. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. And just for the second time, we're just going to go ahead and get started. And um, if you had not um, had these notes down before, we'll just go ahead and re, re speak them so you can. Um, true connections. I don't know. You're saying you tell me to be accountable, have someone to be accountable. How do I know who I can be accountable to? See, I said, be careful who you are intimate with, but, you know, we have to be able to help somebody who may not be sure what that means. And as disciples, we have to know the attributes and the characteristics of someone I can be intimate with in a godly way. Wow. Amen. So number one, it, it, by the way, before I go down this line, 
Does anybody have old notes from that? Anybody? You got it, Brother T? Yes, you do. Okay, can you tell me one of the attributes of a, of, of a true connection? Uh, 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 yeah, a, a true connection. Um, I, I, I mean, I wrote a lot. Okay, just give me one. A true connection. I'll give you a moment. Anybody else? Anybody else? No, break it down with you. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll just go for it. Amen. Um, true connections is they protect your purpose and your destiny. They help you protect your purpose and your destiny. Amen? How do I know someone is a true connection from God? They help protect your purpose and your destiny. They're not there to try to convince you away from what God is calling you to do. That's a red flag of someone who is not connected to your purpose and your destiny. Amen? Glory to God. Number two, discernment of the wrong people in your life. They help you. They help you with discernment. They, give, they help assist you with discerning the wrong people in your life. You know, a person who you're accountable to may say, um, I don't think that that person is good for you. You know, I was talking to someone and we, you know, we were talking about a person who they had gotten to know, but then that person started like to, uh, uh, attributing kind of characteristics that was every time they got around other people that person felt like it was their duty to make the person feel bad about themselves or just to kind of throw shots at them like y'all say you know things that you're like wait a minute if you're my friend why are, you, why are you saying that about me you know why is it why are you trying to make me look bad in front of everybody you know that's a sign of, is that person a true connection to you or for you? Amen? What do you think, Brother brother uh, Muamba? Do you think that a person who you would be in the a, in a, in a, in a midst of someone and you call that person your friend, but every time y'all got around people, that person always has something to negative to say about you or to make you look bad? Do you think that that's a person that's a true God connection? What you think? No, ma'am. Hmm? No, man. I think that's like a person that tries to bring you down in a way. If you're not careful what you share with them, they might go and bring you down. And if you tell them your weakest, I mean, you know, your most kept secrets that you think that they're your friends, they might go and share with the public and you feel very exposed and, yeah. and ashamed. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Did y'all hear that? Nobody who's supposed to be a true God, God connection is supposed to try to expose you in front of people. You know? What'd you say, Sister Jamila? Number one, number one was per, they help protect your purpose and your destiny. A true God connection, they help protect it. Amen? Amen. Like, by any means necessary, like, we need to leave this party. Um, we need to stop watching this. Um, that girl not good for you. That boy's not good for you. That person is kind of whatever, whatever. What you're doing right now is not connected to the spirit of God. Things like that. Does that make sense? And then we were on the next one and Brother Mawamba was saying that we have to be careful because um, they help you discern the wrong people in your life. So if I'm if I'm talking to Brother Elijah, for example, and he's connected to someone that I'm discerning some man right, there's some bad fruit connected to that person, I, it's my duty as your God connection to tell you about that, to help you discern or put us on the right track. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so it kind of connects to the next point. Um, your true God connection, they are not afraid to confront the issues that harm you. I'll say that again. They are not afraid. Y'all say not afraid. Not afraid. Not afraid. Not afraid. To confront. Because you know confrontation is a very bold thing, right? There are a lot of people who are not even confrontational. But because, you know, some people just sway away from confrontation. And it's just kind of like I don't want to deal with the challenges that's going to come with me confronting the situation. So many people kind of push away from that. 
But when you have someone who is a true God connection in your life, they make it their business. They're not afraid to tell you the issues that are harming you or that's going to potentially harm you. Does that make sense? Meaning, meaning I always say, any friendship I have, I put a friendship on the line. Meaning, I could possibly lose that friendship at the cost of being truthful, telling them the truth, walking upright. I might lose the friendship. So you want to do things like that because wouldn't you rather know the heart of the person you call a friend than have them around you and you don't want to deal with issues? And they could be the main people that's causing your demise. I said two weeks ago, be careful who you allow yourself to become intimate with. Okay? I want y'all to remember, I have a little cheat sheet for y'all. If you hear me repeating something over and over again, I promise you're going to get tested later. I'm going to ask you the question later, and I'm going to see if you were listening. So if she repeating something, I might say, Brother Bosco, what did I say when I was teaching on this particular subject over and over again? <laughs> I'm expecting us to be able to actually listen right at, as much down as possible so that you can actually study on your own. Because remember, this is not Lady Hamilton's teaching. We believe that this is God talking to us. Amen? So you got to look at it like, it's not me being accountable to Lady Hamilton more than me being accountable to my soul in Christ. So if God is teaching me something, this is God teaching me through Lady J. Okay? So take it and make it important. Amen? I said, the next point is, they can sense or smell a rat. A good God connection can always smell a rat. Something ain't right. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And then they basically let you know. Something, they can sense when something ain't right. They're, they're, it's like, like their discernment is high. I can always tell when I'm in tune. When I'm in tune. The key word is when I'm in tune with Christ. I can always smell a rat. Y'all hear that? I can smell that. Right. Brother Bosco, what do you think I mean when I say they can sense or they, you can smell a rat? What do you think I mean when I say that? Uh, when you refer to that, uh, um, just, just, that's a quick question. I know it's like I'm answering with another question, but, um, oh, oh my goodness, it just left my mind. Um, right. Take your time. Take your time. Um, okay. So about it, when you say like you can smell a rat, it's more like uh, if if we if me and I would say brother Mumble for, mm -hmm. for a fact, mm -hmm. uh, when he is going through something and like I can sense it without without even him having to like mm -hmm. to say something to me, I'm like yeah. Yeah. some man right, some man right, yeah. Yeah. so like. You know, it's a man, right? And so, like, you can, like, you can almost sense it yes. without him having to talk to you about yes. it. You know, yes. Yeah. There you go. That's a very, very good one. Did y'all hear what he said? No, no. <laughs> he was just basically giving an example of when I say you can smell a rat. I know that's kind of like a wording that we say, but it's something, in other words, like what he said. Brother Moama may not have to actually tell him what's going on. But because of them having a true God connection, he's like, hmm? oh, okay. He can get around Brother Mawama before Brother Mawama can say anything to him. He's like, something ain't right. Something ain't right with this situation. You know, because of the true connection, they can even sense when something stinks around you. Amen? And then, they, and then like I said, right before that, they are not afraid to confront it. Brother Bosco, are you afraid to confront it when you get around them or someone? No. Amen. So that's the truth. Yeah, I want, I, I want to be confronted. There you go. All right. You hear that, Brother Claude? You sit right next to Brother Mawamba. Brother Mawamba sitting next to you. And if you are afraid to confront something that ain't right, then you got to question if you're truly connected. And it's got to be that serious. Because y'all, we live in a day and time, I'm just being honest. We live in a day and time where you got to be very, very careful with people. Their hearts are not right. 
their hearts are just not right. And we have to be careful with that. So we get kind of like a one-up with the Lord because he kind of gives us like a, 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 a weapon or ammunition that the world doesn't get. He gives us something to work with. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 The next one I put, and I'll just kind of go, uh, go slow with it. Uh, they tolerate you with patience. Mm. They tolerate you with patience. But, I, but this is this big word. I learned English. This word, but. But is a what kind of word? A contrast word. But is a contrast word. Meaning, I just said, I just said, Minister G, I'm tolerating you. Like there might be something going on with you. You might be caught up in a sin. I'm tolerating you with patience. But, but, y'all say but. But. But points you to the true goal. All right? So it's not like I'm sitting there babysitting the sin and we're going to sit and, 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 and lodge in this sin. And I'm sitting, I'm watching you sin. As a matter of fact, I'm coming over. And I'm just watching and entertaining your sin. That would be somebody who is not a true God connection. And then they're just convincing you that this is right. But a true God connection. Although they love you in the midst of your sin, in the midst of the weakness, in the midst of the shortcoming. Are y'all hearing me? But they keep you, but I need you to look over here. That's the goal. That's the goal. Meaning, it's not okay for you to be doing what you're doing. I'm just letting you know. I'm not afraid to confront this issue that's going to harm you. I'm not afraid. I'm going to tell you, I smell a rat, something's not right. But I love you and I'm not leaving you. With patience, but I'm going to keep on reminding you of the word of the Lord. Because I need you to understand my true, my true MO for being around you. Does that make sense? So we got to trust in our God connections. And again, this is connected to what? Our intimacy. Our intimacy. We are made that way. We are made to be intimate. God created us to yearn for intimacy. Amen? So it's not like you're wrong for wanting intimacy. We're made that way. That's why it's important to be careful who you let in. And we talked about that. Remember we talked about that and talked about the danger of all that? Amen? Glory to God. Um. This is the last one before I talk about beware, beware, beware. But the last one is, did everybody get that last one? Tolerate your patience. But well, well, once you into the true goal. And then they also thrust you and push you into your purpose. They push you into your purpose. If you want to go left, and it, this ain't the time for that, that true God connection will be like, no, 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 bro, we don't have time for that. Uh-uh. This is going to be detrimental to what you call to do. Get over here. And I'm going to keep on pushing. Now, that person might not do it the same day, because remember, they might be caught up. You might be going through something. But with patience, I'm going to love on you and pray with you. But I'm just letting you know I'm not okay with where you are. That's a true God connection. Amen? See, you still feel love, right? You still feel authentic love even though I'm getting all up in your face. Amen? And the last one is they lead you, lead you in fellowship with Christ. They lead you in fellowship with Christ. Sister Judea was telling me um, when we all had that winter storm going on and they were at school and then that snow came and um, they were out, I think the internet went out or something like that, but before the internet went out, 
they were all together and they were just like, okay, what do we do? It's out, you know, we kind of stuck here, we can't go anywhere. And they were getting ready to watch a movie on the projector. And, um, but before they was getting ready, it was like, it was like, oh, you know, ooh, let's go, let's all just look at a movie on a projector. And one of her friends came out and said, well, if, I think it went out or something like that. Did it go out? And when it went out, she said, well, it must be the Lord trying to tell us to go fellowship with him, go study with him. And they took a moment to go get into their word and fellowship together. Wow. That's a true God connection. Because they could have said anything, right? We could have got caught up in anything. And not that they couldn't watch a movie. Nothing was wrong watching a movie, okay? It's just that at that moment, a friend got an unction from the Spirit of the Lord. And saying, maybe we should go. Maybe this is the Lord's way of telling us. Because something went out with the projector, some, some issue went wrong. And she took that as a sign of God saying, now come be with me. Amen. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So Amen. you want to have people thrusting you into your purpose. So maybe, maybe Sister Judea might have needed that moment. And the God connection was able to push her into that place. Right? Because this flesh is a mess. Y'all say this flesh is a mess. So we just talked about the God connections. Everybody understanding, uh, understood all the different, and there's so many more, much more, but these are kind of like a good few, good characteristics of what the signs are when you're looking and trying to find out who is sent by God in your life. As important as disciples. Because y'all, I'm telling you, when you are not that strong in a particular area, and you have somebody around you that's not helping you, it's going to be easy to go astray. It's going to be easy to just be like, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll pray tomorrow. Let's just have a good time. Let's do this and let's do that. Amen? Amen? So, of course, we all know we got to beware of those who are not. I call them snatchers. They snatch you away. They snatch you away from your purpose. Amen? They cause division and push you away from where you're supposed to be. You hear that, Brother Claude? Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. They cause division. People that are not sent by God, true God connections, a lot of times you see them causing division, Brother Bosco. They cause division. And push you away from where you're supposed to be. They also push you away from the people you're supposed to be connected to. Y'all hear that? See, this is to I'm talking totally the opposite. And I'm done. I have one more point and we're going to expound on this stuff. They cause division, Brother Mama. And they push you away from where you're supposed to be. They give you their part of the influence that will keep you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? They push you away from the people you're supposed to be connected to. They influence you. They amen your folly. They go and connect to the things that are unwise coming out of your, even your own mouth at times. Because we're not always wise. Sometimes we say unwise stuff, right? Am I the only one? Can y'all stay with me? Anybody say unwise stuff sometimes? Uh, and then if I'm talking to somebody and they're admitting what I'm saying that's not right, then I need to be careful about that. I was telling you, and I think she was saying as well, that you know when you got somebody talking about you, to, they're talking about other people around you, you better believe they're talking about you around other people. Because it's what they do. Right? right? So if somebody always got to be talking to, about somebody around you, always have something to say about somebody, y'all, they trying to let you know how they roll. They talk about people. They're gossipers. So when you're not around, they're talking about you. And then you don't tell them all your secrets. And all they do is repeat it to people. And then they're deceptive in all their ways. So we're going to talk about that real quickly, y'all. We have a couple minutes left. 
I think Brother Bosco talked about what it's like when you, um, quote unquote, you can smell a rat around somebody. Amen. Brother Mawama, he talked about that, being careful, discerning the wrong people in your life. Amen. So anybody else, y'all got any questions or any comments concerning what we just talked about? Because remember, we're just trying to be strong in understanding this intimacy thing, y'all. We disciples got to get the intimacy thing right. Amen. And I just sat here and gave some really, really good attributes of what to look for when you are godly connected to someone. Anybody got something? Um, Come on, man. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I love, uh, I love the, uh, when you said that they tolerate you with patience, but point you to the, uh, to the true goal. A scripture came back in my mind where where the word talks about being long-suffering with somebody. You know, when you say that, to be patient with them, but also point, pointing at them at the right, uh, the right goal, the true purpose. It's like, even though, you know, we could be real friends and real close, there's things that a person might do that you don't like you know that they're weak at that particular uh, area. And um, it's like, okay, I don't want to leave them like I don't, I, don't, I don't know them, but rather, you know, point, point, point them to the right direction is now it's gonna be their choice if they wanna either leave or, or they're gonna respect the fact like I'm, I'm telling them the truth and, you know, just wanna be corrected. You know, so when you say be, be patient with them, I hope, that word long suffering came back, came in my mind. I'm like, wow. Glory to God. And I want to make sure we all understand that when you're patient with someone, it doesn't mean that you're actually indulging in the sin with them. Yeah. Okay, I want to be specific with that. Okay? You're indulging in the same sin with them. Your witness is not credible. I'm not saying that God can't speak, but your witness is not credible when you're indulging in the same sin with them. So I just want to be specific when we say being patient, okay? Being patient doesn't mean I'm gonna do this with you till you stop, okay? You gotta be in a position where you're understanding what you need to do. And I'm not, I want us to be clear on that because I don't want us to think that everybody's perfect around here because we're not. We are all working and progressing to being better and being more godly, but you should not be still in the same stuff. You should be working on that. Does that make sense? So that you can be an ambassador for Christ, like an ambassador for Christ. I'm standing for Christ and I'm showing you that it's possible to be free. Does that make sense? Anybody else? It's like, it's like being careful that while you're in the process of trying to help someone else get through it, that you're careful not to allow them to help you. That's right. Did y'all hear what Pastor said? Did everybody hear that? No, ma'am. Okay, so he was just basically saying, in other words, while you're being patient with them and trying to get them to a place where they can be uprooted from their sin, you got to be careful that you're not so in to where they start uprooting you from where you are. Does that make sense? Amen. 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 I mean, I know we've all been there. We've all been there. But we're here to be better and we're here to be stronger. Amen. we all been there. I've been in positions where um, I thought I was strong enough to be here, and then I found out I wasn't strong enough. You know, you got to learn where you are. And then it's not that you can't encourage someone else. The truth is the truth. I'm standing here, pastor stands, we preach the word of God, teach the word of God, whatever, whatever. But we are not perfect, but Christ is. So our job is to be pursuing Christ so that we can sin less and less. Okay? And I'm not excusing sin, I'm just being real. We are not all perfect, but we should be striving for it and we should not be still indulging in the same sin, playing around with it. We need to be progressing somewhere. Amen? Praise Anybody else before we close? Anybody else? What would you say, Brother Claude? 
Yeah, I like that you said uh, a good connection with God can always smell a rat. Because when we were with people, like they saw the true colors, they saw them like, they saw like they trying to get strong in the word of God. Of this world, like, if someone is talking about smoking and, and drinking out all the stuff, we're supposed to be a person like, you can smell like, where is it going? Like, this, this is a rat right here. Like, this, this is already written. So, like, why we know we're supposed not to stay away from them, like, we just met them, like, like this person is not good. That's right, that's right. You had anything to say, Brother Wawamba? Did you raise your hand again? Okay. I mean, that was... Okay, that okay. Was, that was, Brother Baxter? I, 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 I just wanted to, uh, when you had said uh, your true connection, not afraid to confront you, I also wanted to add to that and say, uh, I sh if, if, if I fall, I should be able to feel afraid to talk to my true connection of God, my partner. You know, he shouldn't make me feel like I, I'm scared. He shouldn't feel that way because you should know for yourself that it's better that he's doing it for your own. That's right. You know, That's right. because it's, it, I think it's, it's really scary when somebody comes to you, you know, like, you know, and then you get to thinking so much, but in reality, like they're trying to, they see an area that you lack, and so they they are there for you That's for right. a reason. That's so it's right. not to, to condemn, it's not to forsake anything to make sure like you know better, so do better type of thing. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so don't be afraid the same way it was true, because I like people who are true to me. That's right. You know, if, if they were fake, I wouldn't want anybody fake, and I think everybody could agree. You don't want nobody to fake around you. You know, that's two right. things, whoever speaks to you, and if it hurts you, that's okay. But I'm going to learn from it. No. Praise Amen. the Lord. That. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I just say talk about it. You know, I just say talk about it. Amen. Let's talk about it. Glory to God. Amen. So, we have to pick up some courage then, right? Yeah. Amen. We have to be courageous in Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Can we stand to our feature?